Zakaria alayhi salam says, Ya Allah, I want a special child. I don't just want a child. I want a child that is from some special, you know, treasure vault of yours that you've gifted in ways that others aren't gifted. And where is that captured? Ladunka. He doesn't say, Habli min indika dhurriyatan tayyibatan. He says, Min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyibatan. That lada is actually the closeness to Allah. And by the way, ladun is used when if I, if I say, you know, ladayya qalam, I have a pen. Also translated, I have a pen. But I have to have it in my possession right now. It has to be right next to me. It can't be somewhere far away. So the idea, Ya Allah, from your, from your, from your special closeness, I want a child. And it's remarkable that it's that special closeness to Allah that Allah gave him Yahya alayhi salam. It's actually, it's responding to the words of Zakaria alayhi salam. Habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyibatan. Innaka sami'ud dua. Certainly you are the hearer of the call. You hear the call all, and sami' is different from sami'. Sami' and sami' are, are, are different. Sami', the one who listens right now. Sami', the one who always hears. Not just right now. You've always been hearing my call. In other words, he's not saying, Ya Allah, all these years I've been making dua. All these years I've been, I've been asking you. I'm not saying that Allah, you didn't hear me all those times. I'm saying you've heard me all the time. You've heard every single one of those du'as. Just like you're hearing this one. Innaka sami'ud du'a. And there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt. You know, people, if they're make, praying for something for a long time and it's not answered, then you know what they, they start saying? I've been making du'a for so long, Allah hasn't heard. Allah hasn't listened to my du'a. He's in his old age and a lifetime of making du'a like that. And he says, Allah, you've always heard. In other words, we don't doubt that Allah hears du'a just because it didn't get answered on our terms. There's a difference between those two things. Allah will answer on His terms. You know, so something you should think about in the... Um, it's a small bit of contemplation. It's, and again, it has to do with children. You know, the mother of Musa alayhi salam and the mother uh, or the father of Yusuf alayhi salam, they both lost children. Yusuf alayhi salam's father lost Yusuf. Musa alayhi salam's mother lost Musa, put him in the basket. They both made dua to be reunited with their children. And the mother was reunited with her child a few hours later. Like he ended up in the castle, started crying. The wet nurses came out, started looking for who can feed him. He wouldn't drink anybody's milk. And then his sister got him connected again. And a few hours later, mom and child are back together. Dua answered, but in how long? Within 24 hours. Yaqub alayhi salam has lost his child. Yusuf alayhi salam. He's also making dua. And as a matter of fact, the mother of Musa is not a prophet. The mother of Musa is not a prophet. And she makes dua and her dua gets answered a couple of hours. Yaqub alayhi salam is a prophet or no? He's a prophet. And he makes dua to be reunited with his child. How long does that dua take to get answered? Decades. This boy lost his youth, then he lost his young man, this age in jail. And way down the road, he gets to see him again. And people start thinking, Allah isn't answering my prayer because maybe I'm not close enough to Allah. Wait a second, a prophet prayed and it took that long. And someone who's not a prophet prayed and it... Because the schedule of when a dua is answered and how it's answered, Allah provides whoever He wants without any limits. He's the one who hears all the du'as, but he decides when to provide what. That's a humility we have to hold to ourselves. We don't unfairly judge ourselves and say our du'a is not good enough. We shouldn't say that about ourselves. And on the other hand, we shouldn't put an expectation on Allah. Allah, where's, where's the answer already? I placed the order a couple of days ago and it's still not delivered. Is there a tracking number I can have on this du'a? Because it's, you know, it's not going to work like that. So he made dua in his old age. And by the way, that's the other thing. You know, you could say, I'm, I'm you know, Surat Maryam, he describes, وَشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبَا In Urdu, they say, اب تو بال بھی سفید ہوگی. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm done now. One foot is in the grave. You know, my wife couldn't even have a child when she was young. Now it's, you know, we're both basically now ready to meet Allah. There's no time for that du'a anymore. Now we should make du'a for, Ya Allah, an easy death or just istighfar or... You know, because life is over. This man, alayhi salam, doesn't lose his hope in making the du'a that a young man makes. 
at that age. It shows you the kind of, you know, blind hopefulness that you have to have in Allah. When, you see, when he sees this young girl being provided, he's inspired and he says, Ya Allah, I'm going to ask you because anyone can ask you. No one should turn from you without hope. No one should look at their circumstances and say, Allah, how is Allah going to give me? No, I should just ask. إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ The fa'il al-mufajaat is, uh, some argue that while he was, he was actually in the quarters of Maryam Salaamun Alayha, he saw the food and he started making, he started praying. Like he started making salah. And in his salah, he asked Allah this dua. That's the other beautiful thing here, is that we ask Allah for what we want in our salah. In our salah. That's a sunnah of prophets. In our salah. Why is that important? Because when you are in your salah, you are reciting the word of Allah, you are closest to Allah in the moments of salah. And when you are closest to Allah, that's the time to ask. That's something Allah put in human nature, not even, not even with Allah, with all of our relationships. If there's a moment where your boss is being nice, there's a moment of closeness, maybe that's the time to slip in something about a raise. If there's a moment where mom's being extra nice, I'm so proud of you, Bita. It's like, hey mom, can we go out and get a burger today? That's the time to ask. Not when she's upset, not when you're doing other stuff, but what is... There are moments of closeness where you can slip a request in. Even Asiya, she slipped in the... You know, Firaun is usually in a bad mood. But when he saw Musa salam and there was a moment of closeness and softness, he said, can we keep him? Like if she said, can we keep him? Any other time, what, what would he have said? No, execute the baby, like all the other babies. But there was a moment of closeness. We have to learn that with Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah is teaching us something. There, when there's a moment, and Allah is teaching us, when we are in our closest moments to Allah, it's inside of our prayer. Also it's teaching us, when you see something amazing in, that somebody else has been given, it should inspire you to get close to Allah immediately. And what should you do? Pray. Just when you see something awesome, just make two rak'ah. Just do that. It's a beautiful thing you can bring into your life. You see something amazing that somebody else has, just go make wudu, pray to rakah. Doesn't matter what time, doesn't matter where. And in that prayer, when you're in sajda, just ask Allah. Just ask Allah. That's, that's the inspiration of, you know, Zakariya alayhi salam in these ayat.